cultural shock that you were talking about sleepover. I had one of my teenage daughter that wanted to go clubbing. Mm. And we didn't know what was clubbing. To me, if you say clubbing, I just think people are just drinking and smoking mm -hmm. and short skates and, <laughs> and doing all sorts of things. And it was eating my heart. And my husband, we didn't know what to do. Mm. But we had a friend that was from, it was Indian, Fijian. Mm -hmm. So he says, no, 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 no. We don't know what they want, these kids. But shall we go and see what they do? Mm -hmm. And then we had a conversation with my girls and I told them that, you know, like it's easy, you know, to want to follow other people's cultures. Mm. It's a culture that is being done here. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that because mm. they've grown up in this. But us, yeah. you know, like we've got a different culture and different belief. Mm. If you want to go there, you have to give me good reasons why you want to be there. Mm -hmm. Your other siblings, they've never been to this clubbing thing. So, yeah, this friend of ours and my husband, they took the girls to the clubbing thing. They dropped them. They were, <laughs> they were sitting in the car up until 1 a.m. So, to let people know about marriage is, marriage is a sweet something. Mm. It's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And if you keep your communication lines open. lines open, then marriage can be enjoyable. It doesn't mean that every single time you're laughing, every single time you're enjoying, but you need to communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have got a policy that, you know, people, our bedroom mm -hmm. is not a courtroom. Oh. So don't, don't have all these arguments and stuff. Of course, they might emanate from, you know, from the conversation that you'll be having, but make it a policy that if you start to argue in your bedroom, tell each other, we are not in a courtroom. Mm. So have your conversation somewhere else, not in the bedroom. Aha, uh -huh. my people, did you hear? Together. Mm. I'm not saying, you know, things won't happen, but mm. you all both have the fear of God. Mm. And our mobile phones, our gadgets, mm. they've destroyed a lot of marriages. Mm -hmm. Because, Come on. yeah. Say it. Because, mm -hmm. oh no, not say it. Because <laughs> everyone is, you know, like if you go into your house, every, in a home, everyone is like kids, mom, mm -hmm. dad, everyone is like this. And I'm saying, people end up having arthritis. People end up having clenched bags yeah. because they're always on their mobile phone. There's no communication. People are not enjoying each other. People are looking, they're being entertained by uh, my, my yeah, TikTok. TikTok <laughs> and fans. What, what, is, what do you call it? Is it fans only or on only fans? Mm. Because I didn't have that family support back mm. home that even if there's something that is happening to me, you know, like I've no one, I, I didn't have anyone to share because I didn't know people. Yeah. I didn't trust mm -hmm. in anyone. You know, like as I said, I come from Mutare in Manikaland. It's my cultural belief that mm -hmm. you just don't open your armpit. I don't know whether you say it. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, you don't just open your armpit so that people who's, what's, going what's going on and, you know, like how smelly, you know, or how, you know, bad odor you have. So we don't do that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to trust people first yeah. before I actually share and before I actually go out with people. Mm. Of course. Guess what? Uh, in today's video, we'll be talking about um, our lessons um, learned in the area of parenting, in the area of um, immigration, and just generally lessons that we have learned um, since we came to Australia. And we are hoping that these lessons will be helpful to somebody today. And what better way of tackling this um, important topic than having um, a lovely, wonderful person, somebody that's very dear to me that I'll be introducing quite shortly. And um, she'll be, myself and her, um, and her will be talking about uh, various uh, topics that we believe will be helpful to somebody today. So uh, before I introduce, I wanted to share a quote that I came across um, 
that says family isn't just um, one important thing in our lives, it's everything. It's where we get the strength to face um, the world. It's where we learn the important um, values and enjoy life best moments. So we are all about family. We are all about, um, you know, leading um, lives uh, fully and living out our destinies and being able to do it and do it um, successfully and also happily at the end of the day. So without much further ado, I want to introduce this powerhouse, this lovely uh, sister of mine. I will let her introduce herself and tell us about her because if I say, if I introduce her, I'll, be, I'll go on and on and on. I'll go on and on and on, but I don't want to do that. So without much further ado, welcome on set and talk to my viewers and tell us about who you are, introduce yourself and tell us about you. Thank you so much, Anna. I appreciate you. You're part of my family and I'm so happy to be part of this you know, video. Mm -hmm. My name is D. C. C. Chumayange. I was born in Africa, in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. in a small town called Mutare. Those who come from Zimbabwe, they are familiar with this place. I think it's in the eastern part of the country. And I grew up in Mutare, Rusape, and I went to school in Mutare, and that's where my family was. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that I was born in a family that was so united, a family that used to work together, mm -hmm. a family that used to share. Uh, I could say in our family, we are a family of five. And my father, if I don't speak about my parents, mm -hmm. I would have missed the family aspect of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had beautiful parents, Rosemary and Mike were my parents, but in my father's family, they were about five as well and they were so united. So I had four uncles and one auntie. And from my mom's side, I had my mom and two uncles. And, you know, I grew up so pampered, so loved. And that the same love that I share today, mm with my children, with everyone else that I come across with. I believe in helping, I believe in love, I believe in sharing ideas and sharing whatever little things that I know of. Mm -hmm. And then I would say I did my training in Zimbabwe as a registered nurse and I also I am a qualified midwife I really worked in the, mainly I was working in surgical areas and in management whilst I was in Zimbabwe. Mm. I really loved my job, I loved my community, but sometimes there are things that will push you, or sometimes as men, as the head of the family, they might see opportunities that mm. women might not see. Mm. And when that opportunity came, my husband was really, really praying about leaving the country, but I didn't see the need because I thought I was surrounded by my family. Mm. I was mm. surrounded by my friends. Mm. And I think I had almost what I thought I had reached the peak of my life. Mm. And my kids were going to school, to good schools. But my husband was saying, seeing something different. Mm. Mm. And one day he just said, oh, from work. He spoke to someone who was in New Zealand, who was looking for a place for their son to go to school. Mm -hmm. Apparently, my husband was also the headmaster at that school. Mm -hmm. So he took the call, they spoke, they talked about the country called New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And he came home and he told me about New Zealand. And I was just remembering New Zealand is a small country. Mm -hmm. If I could remember quite well in, from my geography, what I knew about New Zealand was the Treaty of Waitangi. Mm -hmm. I knew about the treaty. I knew about the merino ship and a lot of farming. Mm -hmm. So that's what I said to my husband. What are we going to New Zealand for? Mix <laughs> the lamb. To just see the lamb? Don't you have enough lamb in my country? 
And mm -hmm. he said, oh no, my wife, mm. I really need to go there. I need, you know, he wanted to pursue his studies. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, my husband had studied previously in, here in Australia oh. at Murdoch. Mm -hmm. And I said, you want to leave us again? You want to go somewhere else again? Mm -hmm. Oh, we are young and our kids, they still need you because, you know, without a dad in the family, sometimes it can be challenging. Mm -hmm. So to cut the story short, mm -hmm. he applied for a scholarship at Mercy University mm -hmm. in New Zealand. And he got, you know, the place mm -hmm. and he got the scholarship and he started, you know, processing his paperwork. And, you know, in Africa, sometimes he made some challenges because, you know, like people want to sabotage whatever you are trying to do. Mm -hmm. But through prayer, mm -hmm. we managed to migrate to mm -hmm. New Zealand. He went there first. Mm -hmm. And then I was really, really dragging my feet because I was just saying, oh, my goodness, I know no one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, few of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And you know, like when you're coming to such countries, you don't get a manual that will tell you what needs to be done, mm -hmm. whom you are going to meet, how you are going to be settling, mm -hmm. what challenges are you going to be facing. Mm -hmm. But I said to myself, and the kids were excited, mm -hmm. and then we migrated to New Zealand, but mm -hmm. on a study visa initially. How old were the kids? Uh, I think most of my, the eldest, I think, was 17. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, we migrated to New Zealand. We went to New Zealand. My husband, you know, was really, really surrounded by people with love. Mm -hmm. I really embraced, you know, the love and cherished the love that I got from the people in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, you know, we were coming from Africa, you know, you look at your, the house that you're going to be living. Back home, there are a lot of mansions, and you're looking at your house and the house that you're looking to be renting into. And I saying, oh, we, never, we have never seen, besides our kitchens in the raw areas that are built from wood, most of the houses in New Zealand are actually built from wood. I yeah, mm -hmm. I think because of the earthquakes and stuff like that, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm looking at it and I'm saying, oh my goodness, you brought us to this country to be living in a wooden house. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my husband was saying, no. They've left us in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh my goodness, mm. how am I going to survive with the kids? You no, know, like I had five kids mm. in, in New Zealand and they were of different ages. Mm -hmm. and trying to find out, you know, like how we are going to take them to school. And I had a driver's license, but I'd never done a lot of driving back home because my husband was always there and we used a lot of public transport, which was quite easy. It's easy for, to get a driver at home as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you, know, you can just hire someone, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. So um, we went through all the logistics of me getting a driver's license. My husband was teaching me how to navigate the roads in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then my kids started school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, I thank God that we got a family, you know, like we were welcomed by a family of believers because my husband had found a church. Mm -hmm. And in that church, it, had, it was a multicultural church. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of people from Fiji that, um, yeah, and I think we've got similar cultures with yeah, Fijians. Okay. So the lady that was there just got my hand mm -hmm. and he hold my hand and he said, she will show me wherever I need to go, wherever I need to do, she was going to be there for me. But having five children and she also had her own kids. Mm -hmm. And I said, how are you? Yeah, it was mm -hmm. going to be a challenge, but I think people from church were mm -hmm. very supportive. Yeah, they showed us, they gave us some help, you know, they showed us the markets and stuff like that, where we could go and buy food and stuff like that. Knowing that you're coming mm -hmm. from Africa, mm -hmm. we didn't have a lot of savings. And so buying food was a little bit expensive to feed mm -hmm. five kids yeah. and two adults. Yeah. 
But, you know, like going to the market was a good thing for us. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. kids started school, they made friends, my husband was studying, and I was a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. because I needed to support my husband mm -hmm. and also to support the kids, take mm -hmm. them to school, drop mm -hmm. them to different, you know, mm -hmm. activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then with my nursing background, I felt like I was lagging behind mm -hmm. and I wanted something to just occupy me. Mm -hmm. And I managed to do my registration. In New Zealand, it was not very difficult. I think it was, you know, it went on well. Mm -hmm. And then I started work and I went into a very busy ward mm -hmm. that, you know, like sometimes you could feel it that, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. you, you've got a family, you need to take care of five kids and you also got a husband mm -hmm. and you are actually, you mm -hmm. know, working. Yeah. Just to sort of cut you short there, I, I, I've had two important things that you mentioned that when you came, the first thing obviously I did hear you say that your husband came and then you came. And then the other thing that I also noticed is you allowed your kids to settle in before you could start, you know, your career again, uh, which is something that can be a bit um, difficult or some people can find a bit more challenging. How can you sort of um, advise somebody that's in that situation, you know, is it, was it by default that you did that or did you just want the kids to settle in a little bit more easier or why, why was your approach that way? Uh, you know, as I said earlier on that, mm. you know, like when you come to these, you know, countries mm. is in immigrant, usually you don't get a manual that mm. try to, exactly. that helps you and explains, you know, like, what you have to do, what challenges you are going to, to, to face. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I wanted my kids to settle first is, you know, like when they left, you know, Africa, some of them, they were in, you know, like exam sitting mm -hmm. classes mm -hmm. and for them to come mm -hmm. and join, you know, like the New Zealand system of education, mm -hmm. I felt like my priority oh, was, was my, my children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's why I said, you know, like we can manage with the little money that we had mm -hmm. up until our children are quite settled in school. Okay. All right. So keep going with the story. So you are in the middle of your migration story. So you've mm -hmm. now landed, mm -hmm. your family is here, the kids mm -hmm. have got in school. Mm -hmm. How was the settling in? How, how did that, did you take a short time? And what are some of the things that helped you settle in a little bit more easier? For the kids, I think it was much, much easier mm -hmm. because kids can make family, you know, can make mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. quite, quite very easily. And they were going to school and um, playing sport. Mm -hmm. I think myself, I think I was the one that was really, really, really affected by the move mm -hmm. because I didn't have that family support back mm -hmm. home that even if there's something that is happening to me, you know, like I've no one, I, I didn't have anyone to share because I didn't know people. Yeah, I didn't trust mm -hmm. in anyone. You know, like as I said, I come from Mutare in Manikaland. It's my cultural belief that mm -hmm. you just don't open your armpit. I don't know whether you mm -hmm. say it. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, you don't just open your armpit so that people who what's, going, what's on. going on and, you know, like how smelly, you know, or how, you know, bad odor you have. So we don't do that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to trust people first yeah. before I actually share and before I actually go out with people. Mm -hmm. Of course, as I said, I had like Fijian friends from church mm -hmm. that were really, really supportive. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, like most of the Kiwis were quite supportive, mm -hmm. you know, like... One thing that I know, like, I really, really remember in that I really, really embraced was, you know, we had, I think in New Zealand, they've got the Maori culture. Mm -hmm. And in the street that we're living, because one family had to vacate mm -hmm. their house mm -hmm. and go and live somewhere because they wanted to accommodate us with our big family. Oh, wow. Yeah. So someone had to forget. So, you know, that's the love that I saw when I, when I first arrived in New Zealand. And then in the street that we're living in, you know, when we arrived, everyone brought some food, 
cakes and stuff like that. And they actually welcome, welcomed us in the Maori culture that they made a hangi. Oh. So a hangi is, I think, the way Maori people make their food. Oh, is it? And then I think they make a little bit of fire mm -hmm. and they put ashes and then they put the dig in something like a hole and then they put the fire on top of that hole and they cook it, the food cooks. Uh, wow. So it was, it was a wonderful <laughs> guest. <laughs> so, you know, like I really loved it. So, you know, like from there I started to learn, in, you know, other cultures because coming from Zim, I was interested in how other people live. Mm -hmm. I was interested in traveling. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was living in New Zealand in that, in Palmerston North, I found, I made a lot of friends from church. Mm -hmm. And I also met you know, some African people that had migrated to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So um, we had people from Rwanda. The Rwandanese were very supportive. And we had an African association, oh, yeah, that they were taking care of all people that were, you know, coming into Palmerston North in our city. And also, we also had a chance of meeting the mayor because he was always greeting people that okay. were coming. Yeah, you know, like if you know that there are new people in the city, he was really, really open. Yeah. Wow, that sounds yeah. more welcoming. Yeah, it was. What we, oh, really? What we experienced. Oh, really? It, 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 our story is a little bit different from your story, so it's it's interesting that at least you felt really welcome from the word go, because I think that can be very difficult for families that are mm -hmm. trying to settle in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think what normally discourages a lot of people is when they don't have that sense of belonging. So good on you that you had neighbors, you mm -hmm. had church, you mm -hmm. had. Um, you know, a few, you know, people that mm. held your hand. Mm. And I must say, this is very important. And now in Australia, we now actually have those community groups. When we came first, we didn't have that. Yeah. And I must say, it is only when I moved up to Geraldton and I met you guys and mm. I met Church. And, mm. you know, that's mm. when, you know, I started sort yeah. of feeling, you yeah. know, that yeah. sense yeah. of like, mm, mm. starting to feel like mm. home. So very important, guys, if you're watching me and you have just moved and... Um, and things are a bit tough, you know, um, just try and find those common common groups that can help you settle in, you know, find a church, find a community, find, you know, you know, some neighbors on the street that can be very kind as well. So that can really, really help you. Anyway, before we go to uh, my next question, mm -hmm. there's one important thing that uh, my viewer, somebody who's watching you today for the first time, only has known you now as D, and from you talking to us, they've known you, you're probably a mother and a wife. But I want you, because I know you carry very many hats, I want you to tell my viewers today who D is in terms of what is she, who is she, and, um, you know, tell, tell my viewers what type of nurse you are and that sort of thing, you know, so that, you know, if, if someone's watching you, they know that you can actually hold this many hearts and still be successful in Australia because to me you're a successful woman. Oh thank you so much. Mm. You know for people to know me as D, mm. I would like to say as you have said, if mm. you alluded, I'm a mother, mm -hmm. I'm a wife, I'm a sister to someone, mm -hmm. I'm a grandmother, I've mm -hmm. got grandchildren mm -hmm. that I cherish quite a lot mm -hmm. and I'm a nurse, but mm. nurse is a job mm. that just comes to support us financially. Mm -hmm. But I do a lot of things in church mm. and in the community as well. Mm. Um, I think my passion in nursing is helping people mm. and to make people feel better. Mm. I'm a surgical nurse by profession. Mm. And because, you know, with, with surgery, you just cut and... Mm -hmm. remove the problem and mm -hmm. the person is fixed and they'll go mm -hmm. unless if they've got other comorbidities mm -hmm. but you know basically that's what surgical nursing is all about it's not like you're fixing the problem and they go mm -hmm. however is I traveled in my career mm -hmm. as a nurse in New Zealand I was working as a manager in a, in a in acute surgical ward mm -hmm. and when I came to Australia I also did a lot of management jobs and then as I was working with someone 
I've got passion about mm -hmm. women, women mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I, I don't want to say I'm a feminist, but mm -hmm. I want to empower or emancipate women mm -hmm. because I'm coming from a background where women were marginalized. Mm -hmm. But the moment I came to New Zealand, you know, our first prime minister that I welcomed was Helen Clark. She was okay. female. So anything, anyone who is in higher position is a, is a female. I really want to, you know, push the narrative that, you know, as women also need to be yeah, in, in, in position of, you know, authority and power. Mm -hmm. So I heard someone talking about breast cancer and stuff like that. And I really looked at women and I had mm -hmm. women in Africa at heart. And I mm -hmm. said, I need to understand and learn about cancer, the big C, mm -hmm. because a lot of people, they are so scared of the big C. Mm -hmm. So currently I'm working, you know, in integrated cancer services mm -hmm. as a breast cancer and a specialist mm -hmm. yeah, in Gerard. That's, that's, yeah. that's amazing. No, that's thank amazing. you. Mm. So uh, I think the privilege we get to work with patients in um, the most difficult times of their lives, mm. to hold their hands, for me, mm. I find that to be more than just simple ministry. It is mm. quite, um, quite um, a, a position of, of privilege mm. that God has given us to be able to hold uh, women and even families by extension, knowing mm. that mm. a mother or a woman is at the center of it also. For me, that's um, really, really good. Mm -hmm. Now, to the bits that we want to talk about. Like I said earlier, you're joining me just now. And you've, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we are going to talk about the lessons we have learned, you know, mm -hmm. in the area of parenting. We are going to talk about um, lessons we have learned. Or better still, Dee is going to share some of those lessons she has learned. She's been at this thing called marriage for a, for a while, I must say. And um, she is a mentor to many of us, including my family. She's my go-to. And I just, she's taught me a lot. And I know that um, she's going to teach you something today. So we'll start off by like saying, talking about, you know, raising kids. Um, and as you can tell, she hasn't really, really said it, but she was in New Zealand first. And then now she lives in Australia. She lives and works in Australia. So, and she has adult kids. She has a lot more kids that um, she supports. And, you know, generally she has, including us. <laughs> so, um, I want you to talk about, you know, raising successful, you know, it, it is a privilege that you have successful kids. That, you know, I'm proud to say that I know, you know, I've seen what they've done and what they continue to do in the community. But I want you to walk through uh, somebody that is just come to Australia. They have, you know, toddlers, they have teens, they have younger adults, and uh, they've gotten the culture shock you get when you come to this country that you have to do everything by yourself mm -hmm. and you have to be available for your kids. You don't have a lot of support. I want you to walk with us and give us some of the challenges you've seen over time, either with your own parenting or with parenting from the people that you know. And talk to us about those challenges and what or any lessons that you have learned on how to mitigate those challenges. Anna, I'm African mm -hmm. and I was raised by many people. Mm -hmm. um, we have got a saying that it takes a village, a village to, raise a to raise a child. Mm -hmm. So that concept was the concept that was upon my heart mm -hmm. that you know, if my child is doing something that is not right, mm. another parent can, can just try not to reprimand, step but in. to step in and make, us out, make me aware in my husband that mm. there's something that is your child doing. To um, the people that are in, here in the diaspora, mm. you can't, if, you, if you are here for the first time, or if you are here because you 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 know you were, you were raised up here mm. in in the Western world mm. as we call it, it is really a challenge. I can't say I've got a manual. I I don't have a book, mm. but I just want to 
help someone from the lived experience, mm. from my own experience. I could say, first, when you come here, we have got two competing cultures. Mm. You've got that African background, and you're moving into the Western world or you're in mm. Australia. They've got a totally different culture to us. Mm -hmm. And their religious beliefs mm -hmm. might be different mm -hmm. from yours. Mm -hmm. The food that they eat is totally different from the food that mm -hmm. we've been feeding our children with. And sometimes when you come to these places, you want to jump in and join the bandwagon and do what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing that I would like to reiterate is when you come to such countries, know the purpose mm. of your move. Yeah. Know the purpose. Exactly. What brought you here mm. into Australia or what brought you into the diaspora? Mm. You need to know that. And you also need to know that you didn't come with anyone. Mm. So. Mm. The mistake that I've seen most of us make is, one, we want to live a life of competition. Mm -hmm. To say, you know, like when I was back home, mm -hmm. I saw someone driving a BMW and I want to buy a BMW because it's quite easy mm -hmm. to get a loan and buy a new car, mm -hmm. one. Number two, you are in competition that you want to build the biggest and most beautiful mansion back home mm -hmm. that, might be, that might end up being a white elephant. You might not even stay there. Mm -hmm. I would say make yourself comfortable where you are and then you can look at what needs to be done back home. Mm -hmm. Number two, most people think when they are here they can solve all the problems of everyone in Africa. They think, you know, like they can take care of everybody in Africa. To be honest with you, I think it's impossible. You can help as much as you can, but make sure that mm -hmm. you are comfortable. You have your interest at heart. Mm -hmm. you have the interest of your children mm -hmm. at heart. And also here, mm -hmm. there's a lot of credit card. Don't mm -hmm. use money that you don't have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a mistake that we all made because it was easy money. We all went to buy things on credit. We all have this, you know, after pay these days. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you realize when you are knee deep mm -hmm. into credit and it will be very difficult to come out. Hence, you see a lot of people, a lot of mothers, mm -hmm. they work shift after shift after shift after shift. Mm -hmm. Yes, you make money, but the more you make, the more you give to Atto, to the mm -hmm. taxman. Mm -hmm. So you are actually losing the precious time that you're supposed to be having and sharing with your children. Yes. As Anna, you said, I've got adult children. Some of them, they sit, you know, like we are talking and joking. They will ask us, but mom, I think you neglected us on this aspect. Because now they are open and they can talk to me freely. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at it and say, yes, sorry, I didn't know about that. But why didn't you tell me? And you say, oh, telling an African woman I'll be slept. <laughs> African mom. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like now I'm saying, if I see the next woman that comes into Australia or over, you know, to, to the Western world, I need to talk about this. Mm. Have time. Make time with your children. Mm -hmm. Children are not like shoes mm -hmm. that, you know, you know, like when we were growing up, you know, my eldest will put this shoe, the next one will put on that shoe, the other one will put on that shoe. We are expecting that they all fit in that shoe. It's mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. Children are different. Children have got different needs. Yeah. So to mothers and fathers that are listening to this conversation, I really want to hammer this mm -hmm. you know, thing to you, that you need to create time mm -hmm. with your children. Yeah. Know each child is an individual. Don't put a blanket to say, my kids do this. No. Mm -hmm. If you have got Susan, know that Susan likes cooking. Mm -hmm. Support Susan 
with cooking. Make sure that she attains the lesson. Make sure that you actually, you know, show that you're interested in what they are doing. Mm. So, you know, like they are great chefs because I think the thing that the, the mentality that we had is children should be doctors, they should be nurses, they should be teachers. Yeah, but there are a lot of things, there are a lot of opportunities, especially in this, in this part of the world. Yeah, opportunities are plenty. It's only how we are just going to, you know, yeah, yeah. Expose, yeah, expose and just support them. Mm -hmm. If your child is into sport, mm -hmm. be there for them. Mm -hmm. Be there because initially I didn't believe in that. Mm -hmm. I just said she's wasting my time. You know, like you're playing soccer, you're a woman. I've never seen a woman that plays soccer. But now we've got the same kids that are playing, swim, you know, professional football. Yeah, so, you know, like I just want to encourage you know, like anybody who's listening, to, listen to your child, mm -hmm. support them in whatever they are doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the word of God, mm -hmm. I go back, you know, like if you're not a Christian, don't take any offense. Uh, you know, like in Proverbs 22, verse 6, it mm -hmm. says, mm -hmm. train your child, mm -hmm. train your child. Mm -hmm. And your child will never stop being a child. Mm -hmm. You continue, it's, it's a process that you continuously train your child. Mm -hmm. So, Whatever you want, pray for your children. You have time, family time, that you sit, you know, like what I was doing with my kids, because they were going to different schools, they were doing different sports, but we had our time together as a family, dinner time. Mm -hmm. Everyone should be at dinner. Mm -hmm. We sit at the table, we ask how school was, we hear how school was going. We see who is eating, who is eating well, who is not eating well, who doesn't like this type of food. So that next time when we prepare the next meal, we incorporate everyone. You know, we hear people, some are going there, starting to have anorexia because each one is eating food in their own bedrooms. Mm -hmm. No food is, was, was eaten in their bedrooms in my house. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. dinner time was mm -hmm. a time for us to sit together. Mm -hmm. It was a time for us to hear. You know, I would talk about my work. My husband would talk about school because we're still going to school. Our kids would talk about school. We laugh. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's mm -hmm. facing any challenges, then we talk about it. So like my youngest daughter went to school and she came back. She was so excited mm -hmm. at dinner table because she had a story to tell us. And then she says, mom, and I said, what is it? Mm -hmm. And she says, I got a principal award. Mm -hmm. Then everyone was saying, principal award, what did you do? You know, mm. what, grades, you um, good. what <laughs> grades did you get? You know, was it maths? Everyone was asking about the subject. And then she, she looked at us and says, oh, no, I was just helping picking up papers and making the school tidy and neat. And everyone laughed, you know, like, so it became a joke. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, yeah, the principal's award. So we were giving each other awards because know. we, you know, <laughs> we copied from the concept that the school was having. So that even the little thing that you do in the household, mm. you know, it's an award. Yeah. And also we need to teach our children mm. how to talk to us. Mm -hmm. We are from Africa. Mm. Kids need to respect their parents. Mm. They need to know when to talk. Mm and when not to talk. To be honest, they have to be mm -hmm. very strong at this. Mm. And number two, don't let your child forget your language. Mm. Because today it's okay, but tomorrow they want to know where they came from because every single time you're walking in the street, mm -hmm. wherever I go to work, because I'm of a different color, They'll ask me, where, where, are, you? Where, are, you? where are you from? Mm -hmm. I was born in Australia, but where did your parents come from? <laughs> and they need to know that you, you come from Kenya, you come from Nairobi, mm -hmm. and you speak Swahili. Mm -hmm. And in my country, we speak Shona, we speak Ndewele. They have to know that if your children loses their language, they've lost their identity. Mm -hmm. I have to reinforce this. If your children loses their language, they've lost their identity. There you go, my people. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we, 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 we need that.
All right. Mm. Yeah, uh, excellent. That's mm. really, really eye-opening. I just want to hear your opinion about, because the one thing that I struggled with when I came to Australia, especially with my children and having worked in emergency department in the area of, you know, you know, sexual, you know, abuse and stuff like that. I was very, very reluctant to allow my kids to go for sleepovers. How did you tackle the area of sleepovers? Because they are everywhere in this country. My goodness, it was a challenge. It was a big thing because I, my kids were all coming to that teenager, you know, you know, age. We didn't believe it Mm -hmm. and we didn't believe in it. And my first thing that I said, my husband said, they need to come and sleep over here first. Mm-hmm. Then we see mm-hmm. what they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the first time, it was a church thing, and they came to our house mm-hmm. with their leader. And then the second time, they wanted to go, but we were against sleepovers because mm-hmm. we didn't, we weren't sure Mm-hmm. Yes. of what they were going mm. to be exposed to, mm. what they are going to be mm. taught, what they are going to be eating. You know, like, I was a little bit skeptical about that. Okay. And mm. to me, it was a no. Mm. I'm sorry, but mm. it was a no. Yeah, I think mm. what we did for us was, I think, we also were not really for sleepovers and mainly for the same reasons that you, you, you're giving. But obviously just that fear of, you know, you're not sure really because even if you've met them and stuff like that, but as, you know, you can, you know, peer pressure is actually mm. real. Mm, 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 mm. But as much as we tried to shield them and we continue to try to shield them, we we'll still, you know, allow them like if there's a sleepover somewhere, we still are these old school parents that will go pick them at about. 11 or midnight and bring them home so okay. we yeah so that's that's an area that um, can be a bit um, challenging for African parents I know of some of my friends that you know allow their kids to go for sleepovers and stuff like that and and, and it's fine I mean as long as you know you know uh, families um, are different and people mm. do things mm. differently mm-hmm. but um, it was a very tricky one for us because mm-hmm. honestly we 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 we, it was a new, completely new, new, new concept, thing, yeah, new yeah. concept, Mm-mm. completely. So it's an it's an area that we struggled with, and obviously came to a consensus and agreed with our children. So we'll allow you to go, but you know, because after all, you'll be sleeping from twelve. Why, you know, we can pick you from twelve because hopefully by that time lights will be out. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. You won't sure, be sure. missing yeah, anything yeah, really, yeah. apart from missing your bed. So yeah, that's an yeah. area that we looked yeah. at. What about the area of um, did you did you and your children or did they experience any issues in the cultural norms? Um, what, what's your take on um, how the culture is different here with regards to obviously vaping now that's the common thing, smoking and stuff like that. How did you try to navigate that and how did you teach your children to stay away from all these things? You know, like as a parent, you can only talk of what you see mm. when they're around you. Mm, yeah, of but when they are out there with others, sometimes you don't know. Mm. But I'll go back mm. to that biblical mm. verse mm. that I have told you. You know, like if you have time with your children, mm. you read them scriptures, you tell them what you believe in, what, you know, like sometimes children copy what you what their they parents do. do, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we are role models in, in our families. Yeah. And I, I can't say I had any issue with all those things. If they mm-hmm. started doing it, they might have mm-hmm. started when they had left home. Okay. But I never had any issue with that. Mm-hmm. The only issue, cultural shock, that you were talking about sleepover, I had one of my teenage daughter that wanted to go clubbing. Mm-hmm. And... We didn't know what was clubbing. To me, if you say clubbing, I just think people are just drinking and smoking mm-hmm. and short skates and, <laughs> and doing all sorts of things. And it was eating my heart. And my husband, we didn't know what to do. Mm. But we had a friend that was from, it was Indian, Fijian. Mm-hmm. So he says, no, 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 no. 
We don't know what they want, these kids. But shall we go and see what they do? Mm -hmm. And then we had a conversation with my girls and I told them that, you know, like it's easy, you know, to want to follow other people's cultures. Mm -hmm. It's a culture that is being done here. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that because mm -hmm. they've grown up in this. But us, yeah. you know, like we've got a different culture and different belief. Mm -hmm. If you want to go there, you have to give me good reasons why you want to be there. Mm -hmm. Your other siblings, they've never been to this clubbing thing. So, yeah, this friend of ours and my husband, they took the girls to the clubbing thing. They dropped them. They were, <laughs> they were sitting in the car up until 1 a.m. Is it? Waiting for the kids. <laughs> and they went in there. Mm -hmm. And the next morning, mm -hmm. I didn't ask. Mm -hmm. I just said to my husband when he came back, how was it? Mm -hmm. And then he says, oh, the crazy kids out there. That's all what he could say. <laughs> and then I looked at my teenager girl the next morning. And she said to me, ah, oh, mom, you know, we went there. But there's just nothing exciting besides people that are smoking and stuff uh, like that. And I don't think it's a good place for me to go as a Christian. Wow. And I said, oh, wow. If I had said no, yeah, she, she, she con mm. con continuously she was going to be curious to know what other yeah. people, whether she was missing something. Mm. But she just says to her, hey, I'm not going there anymore. Oh, nice. Because the place is not for a Christian girl like me. The place is not for me. That's what she said. And that's when it stopped. Wow. You never heard about clubbing, anything like that, no. Wow. Wow. So, so, you know, like sometimes we are quick to judge mm -hmm. and we are quick. Sometimes when you say no, 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 no to things, yeah, people would like, yeah, people want to discover mm -hmm. and then they'll discover. They say whatever the, is forbidden is sweet. Exactly. <laughs> so I think we gave them that role uh -huh. and we were there to support them. And I think in his head, she was saying, oh, my dad is out, is out there waiting for me. Is this right? And I think she never went there. Oh, good. Mm. That's good. And oh, wow. yeah, that's, that's, that's then the smoking good. part of it, and, and to be honest, they might have started now, but uh, I, I, I haven't. You haven't yeah, experienced. I haven't experienced that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Um, so the other thing that um, obviously I have been intending to, you know, talk to my viewers about marriages in Australia. And I was reading uh, some uh, researches and looking at the Australian marriage and um, divorce rates and stuff like that. And interestingly, our people like, you know, even our African um, uh, descent, immigrant descents, Obviously, they can be quite, you know, um, shocks, obviously, when you come here, uh, lots of pressures, lots of work, lots of unmet expectations. And these are some of the things that I've just read that are contributing heavily to the area of marriages not working out. And obviously, it can be quite difficult for families, kids and stuff like that when marriages are on the rocks and stuff like that. You've been not only in marriage for a long time, but you've been um, like a, a church minister, uh, a person of influence in the community in this area of nurturing uh, young women, nurturing um, young mothers and stuff like that. What are some of the lessons or what are some of the things that you think are contributing to this marriage is breaking down? And what are some of the suggestions and lessons you would give my viewers so that we try and preserve, you know, marriages because the enemy is definitely at work against marriages and uh, we need to find a way or we need to educate each other, encourage each other to preserve this institution of marriage. So walk me through some of the things that you've seen that have caused marriages to break down and some of the uh, ways, some of the lessons you can offer my viewers to what you can say can help them preserve their marriages? Um, I don't want to say I'm an expert in marriage. No, 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 no. Mm. 
-hmm. but I'm just there to mm -hmm. share my views. Mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, like this is based on evidence-based research, mm -hmm. what I'm going to say, mm -hmm. but I'm just, you know, like taking, you know, one chapter from this book, one chapter from there, one chapter from lived experience, and I will add it mm -hmm. to this conversation. Mm -hmm. Marriage is something that the devil hates. Mm -hmm. And it's a union mm -hmm. that you leave, a, a wife leaves her parents, mm -hmm. the husband leaves his parents, and they are joined together. Mm -hmm. So being joined together, it means quite a lot. Mm -hmm. There are two different people that are coming from two different cultures mm -hmm. or two different backgrounds. And coming together and sitting in one mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. sharing everything, it can be challenging. Yeah. But what I want to advise or to let people know about marriage is marriage is a sweet something. Mm -hmm. It's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And if you keep your communication lines open, then marriage can be enjoyable. It doesn't mean that every single time you're laughing, every single time you're enjoying, but you need to communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have got a policy that, you know, people, our bedroom mm -hmm. is not a courtroom. Oh. So don't, don't have all these arguments and stuff. Of course, they might emanate from, you know, from the conversation that you'll be having but make it a policy that if you start to argue in your bedroom, tell each other, we are not in a courtroom. Mm. So have your conversation somewhere else, not in the bedroom. Aha, mm. uh -huh. my people, did you hear? Uh -huh. Yeah. Number two, mm. don't dwell on the issues that happened in the past. Mm and bring it into the conversation. And you did this, you did You did that, 20, you did 20, 20 oh, and, and I'm not going to do this, you are doing it again. If you continuously to do that, mm -hmm. you are hating mm -hmm. your other partner, mm -hmm. either your husband or your wife, mm -hmm. because every single time they are so tensed up, mm -hmm. and every single time they see you, mm -hmm. they are thinking, you are thinking about the past. Yeah. They are not at easy, they, are not, they can't show that affectionate because mm. they are so tensed up about what you are going to say, about what happened. If I am the one that did that thing mm. 20 years ago, mm. if it is continuously brought into our conversations, mm. you know, it hurts. It does. It, it, it makes me feel very little. It makes me feel like I'm not emancipated, I'm not part of the relationship. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. please... If we have forgiven each other, forget. let forget everything and water under the bridge. Forget. So we are talking about communication. Mm. Two, you need to have that love language mm. in your relationship. Mm -hmm. You know my husband is angry. I don't want to talk about money because you know already he's angry. He probably is thinking in his head that he can't actually manage to take care of his family. That's why he's angry. Mm. But you know, like in my culture, we use totems. Mm. So my husband has got his own totem. I've got my own totem. If you see you now your wife mm. addressing you with your totem, What's it's a nice, a totem is like... Um, Sweet name or something? No. It's like me, I belong to the heart family. Mm. My husband might belong to the zebra family. Mm. If I come and say, oh, zebra, oh, uh. you know, you are a nice animal, an animal that has got nice colors. You know, you are saying something that is prompting him to be joyous and be happy. Yeah. 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 And also my husband will say, oh, the Moyo people. <laughs> you find that for my... So, you know, like... <laughs> It brings, a, it's, it's, that's the love language that I'm trying yes. to, to, you know, to, to bring to, to, you know, to, you know, to this conversation. Mm -hmm. 
But, you know, some people have got their love language to say, oh, my goodness, look at your dimples. Oh, they're, they're. So, you know, like there's something that you talk about that you all laugh about. Yeah. I know we all make mistakes. No one is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So try by all means to forgive each other. Talk. Mm. If you think there's something that is not going right, have a moment of talking. Mm. And sometimes, as I say, I'm from a nickel and we always keep our it's like this. Mm. You need to find someone whom you trust. Mm. Don't yeah. ever just run and say, my husband, you didn't come home yesterday. My husband, you, you, you spent all the money. My wife is coming late from work. People, you'll be the, you know, like, you'll be the talk of the whole city. Mm. And then once your wife or your other partner hears about this, then you start to fight. To say, this thing happened yesterday, but I heard Ms. Sorenson talking about our relationship. Mm -hmm. Try to find someone whom you trust. We do have our aunties that we trust. Find mm -hmm. someone whom we trust in, okay. and confine in them and talk. And you know, like sometimes just talking to someone, by the time you go back home, mm -hmm. you're already, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I've seen is, mm -hmm in the relationship. You know, like some people, I'm sorry to say this, but some people, their sexual life is dying. Mm -hmm. You know, like if it's dying that natural death, if you are still young, you know, you need, you know, to love each other and just enjoy each other and have it. And have it as much as you want, different position, different styles. It should be something that you feel like, my wife is coming today, I'm going to, my husband is coming. So you have that vigor in your sexual relationship. It, okay. it, it brings joy. I'm sorry to say this, Victor is mine. I know. <laughs> no, I'm no, so you're sorry. Right. Don't be sorry. Mm. It's mm. important to mm. tell people mm. the truth mm. because sometimes, mm. you know, when we hide, mm. Um, mm. when we hide so much, mm. um, <laughs> of these things, it's mm. important to talk about mm. them because uh, they are things that are happening. De definitely. And obviously yeah. it's good that we get to the root of it because we need to preserve, I think yeah. I have a big heart mm. for families, we mm. need to preserve mm. this institution mm. called marriage mm. and we will not do it as long as we are not telling each other the truth. Sure. Because mm. like you rightfully say in this country, people are from one shift to another, you're mm. tired, you mm. get mm. home, mm. Is, you know, there's, there's nothing, nothing like mm. physical, mm. whatever, you're no, tired, there's you're nothing. Dead, yeah. you shower and that's yeah. it. And they're just saying, well, did you do this, did you do this, did you do this? Yeah. I just want to, if, to all, yeah. Even if someone yeah. comes close sure. to you. Yeah, you're, you're just so tired, you're fed up. <laughs> to my viewers, I just want to reiterate, mm. please, mm. money is not everything. It's never enough. Baby. And it will never be enough. Mm. Take care of your family. Value your family values. Mm. Stay together, work together. Use the little money that you have resourcefully. Mm. That's yeah. what I could advise you. Number two, I've spoken about communication. I've spoken about sexual life. Number three, credit. Don't be in debt. Because mm -hmm. if you are in deep debt, there's no joy because you're trying to make things mm -hmm. join. You're working there to pay this. You're working there. So, you know, like, dad is working in the morning, picks his bags, he goes. Probably you mm -hmm. see dad tomorrow morning when he's leaving again. Mom does the same thing. You know, when you come, yeah. there's nothing because you're tired, he's exhausted, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. And then what will happen? Dad will hear someone talking about something somewhere. Mm -hmm. He listens, mm -hmm. he enjoys. Mm -hmm. Mom hears something, yeah. she listens, she enjoys. So I, I feel like that is the cause of most breakages mm -hmm. in our marriages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So please, that are listening, try to work together and try to live a life that is debt free. Mm, okay. That's important. That's if we can, mm -hmm. if we can. Mm -hmm. Don't be in a, in a position of changing your sofas every single day. If you look at the Muzungus in here, the people that are here, you know, pardon me, they start from humble beginnings. They buy second-hand things up until they've got enough money to buy expensive things, if that is what you want. But just start from somewhere. Yeah. And number two, try to have dates nights. Uh, yeah. 
language. That's the love language. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You need to have date nights. Where the woman dresses up, the husband dresses up. You go out. No kids, the two of you, you eat, you we'll enjoy. Say where will we put our kids? You know, like they are, <laughs> they are babysitters. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wherever I'm living, where I am, you okay. call me, I'm more than happy to sit down and babysit, babysit. your child. Because we want to preserve marriages. Mm -hmm. That's I volunteer every single time someone says, I've got a kid, I'm, saying, I'm here, I can babysit. Because I want people to enjoy their life. Because you only see things on movies. Mm. And the other thing that we need to do is we need to pray together to mm. those people that pray. Because if you are praying together, mm. I'm not saying, you know, things won't happen. But mm. you all both have the fear of God. Mm. And our mobile phones, our gadgets, mm. they've destroyed a lot of marriages. Mm -hmm. Because Come on. yeah, say it. Because mm -hmm. oh no, not say it. Because <laughs> everyone is you know like if you go into your house ev in a home, everyone is like kids, mom, dad. Home. Everyone is like this, and I'm saying people end up having arthritis. People end up having clenched backs yeah. because they're always on their mobile phone. There is no communication. People are not enjoying each other. People are looking. They are being entertained by uh, my my yeah, TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> In fans, what what is what do you call it? Is it fans only or on only fans? Because that's because it's my gadget. Nobody can peep into my gadget because I'm looking at it. So try to minimize the use of gadgets when you are at home or even in your bedroom. Because if you go in your bed, someone is looking to the right, the other one's looking on the left. We are all on your on the phone. You have time to enjoy one another. Okay. Number. The other one is our, our family relatives, sometimes they can destroy our relationship because one is saying your wife is like that, your husband is like that. You know, oh, oh, oh. Of course, you have left your family. Husband has left his family. We do help. Let us have a mutual pocket mm -hmm. that we can help both sides. Okay. Some are advantaged, some are disadvantaged, but if you just try to equalize everything, because most women fight. You don't want to see my mother. You don't want to see my father. You don't want to see this. You don't want to see that. No. That's true. Mm. Try That's to, really true. to have a communicative... I think, I think you've given me like really good tips myself, especially in that area of, you know, phones and stuff like that. I think it's, it's, it's an important area. I don't know what your take is about... Um, one other thing that I've noticed um, in my looking through is... Unmet expectations can bring a bit of um, discord in families. And by, by that, I just essentially mean like, you know, when we come from Africa, you know, we have a lot of help, but mm -hmm. we come here and there are tasks. And for me, I don't believe there are tasks for women and there are tasks for men. And even now that I'm raising my son, I'm spending time with him in the kitchen. I'm doing things Good. with him so that he mm -hmm. knows that when he's older, mm. I want him to mm. be someone's mm. uh, husband. I mm. want him to be able mm. to do mm. stuff in the kitchen. So the thing that I've seen is there is a bit of unmet expectations um, where, you know, you know, the man is expecting the woman to come from work and do things. And uh, the woman is expecting the husband will help. They will not help. They are, she's tired. And, you know, so it, it becomes almost like a vicious cycle. Like you rightfully say, she got to bed tired. She will not reciprocate. So I feel like that's an area that I don't know if you can shed a bit more light, but I feel like it's an area that could do with a bit of, you know, guidance and, um, you know, people knowing that they need to help one another, you know. They need to help yeah, true. Another. I understand. Mm. But, you know, like, as I said, mm. communication mm. is the best thing, mm. the best medicine. Mm -hmm. So to husband and wives, if you are working a long shift, mm -hmm. you could say, today I'll be coming late. Would you mind to help me doing this? Would you mind? If you say to a man, you need to do this, and oh. you, the man says to you, you need to do this, then you start to fight. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and so you need to communicate, you know, politely or respectfully. That's mm -hmm. the way that I would use. Respect each other when you're talking. Mm -hmm. Respect each other when you're allocating tasks. Respect, even respecting the little things that either your partner brings it should yes. be respected. In the issue of cooking, yes, mm -hmm. I know our husband, they came from Africa. Some of them are very good cooks, mm -hmm. some are not. Mm -hmm. But if they cook something, you say, ah, 
What's this? I don't need this. This is rubbish. Tomorrow, is that person going to cook? No. no. Even if it's not, you know, you tried your best. Oh, this one. I think next time you'll be better. You know, like you are giving, you are encouraging, you are motivation. I think you need to, to motivate someone. With my kids, my male kids, mm. they all cook. Mm. They all cook. And I've just taught them to mm. cook. Because back home, I think we were spoiled. We had, we had maids. And coming here, you're doing everything for yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's where people end up having unmet needs because mm -hmm. you're thinking, who's going to do this? Who's going to do this? Mm -hmm. But, you know, like if you sit down with your husband, someone will say, to be honest with you, I'm a bad cook. Yeah. I yeah. can't do this. Mm -hmm. And then if you say, ah, it's okay. If you could hang the linen, the laundry, mm -hmm. if or you could... Cut, uh, oh, me cut. Yeah, just stay with uh, me the Exactly. Well. And that's as you are talking because mm -hmm. he can be in the kitchen mm -hmm. if you are always sulking. Uh, 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 he can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she can't as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you communicate well, if you're not happy with something, you just say, just, mm -hmm. I just need five minutes. I'm not really, really happy with what happened, even at work. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just need a breather. Mm -hmm. Or I just need to take a drive. Mm -hmm. And you come back, probably you come back refreshed. And then you can talk. But mm -hmm. just giving each other tasks. You know, like men, they are human beings. They feel for, for, for their women. They feel for their wives. They feel for their children. But I think if you communicate to say, can you help me with this? Mm -hmm. Are you able to do this? Mm -hmm. I think it's the beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, would you like to see me cooking this? Yeah, would you want to try this? Oh, yeah. And sure. then, you know, like someone is welcomed in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And because sometimes... African women, they shun their men from the kitchen. This is my place. You can't come here. The kitchen is place for the woman. And then, you know, like, you can't come in the kitchen because You've said you have said it. But if you welcome him, you show him how to cook, how to do this. They are not stupid. They can help. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. That's and, very true. Mm. and your children, each one needs to do, even the girls, they need to know how to drive how to look at their cars, how to see what's wrong. Yeah, I changed the tires. And the most thing that I want us to teach our children, because they are going, we are the first generation mm -hmm. to come overseas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Our children are going to be the second generation. Mm -hmm. There is a good thing that I've embraced from this culture mm -hmm. over here in the Western. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Their yeah. children, mm -hmm. they are quite independent. Extremely independent. Yeah. They know when to, see, they are taught. We need to teach our children mm -hmm. to say, this is not right, mm -hmm. this is wrong. Yeah. So to speak up for themselves mm -hmm. and stand up for themselves. Mm -hmm. Because what I've seen is our kids sometimes they're a little bit shy. A little bit shy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't speak, they up, don't their speak up their minds. Mm -hmm. Let them speak up their minds. Here as well, I've seen they teach their children the value of money, yeah, yeah, they do. They how do. to save money. Mm -hmm. From early age. From early age. Mm -hmm. So if our children are not mm -hmm. taught how to save money, when they are going to be adults and husbands mm -hmm. in the near future, oh, or true. women you know, or, or wives in the near future, sometimes it can be difficult because they don't know how to use their finances. Yes, so yes, our children should be taught to be financially independent mm -hmm. and to be financially stable that they own, they can buy their own car, they can buy their own houses, because they are competing with people that are, yeah, 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 yeah. That are the local people here. And I'm very glad you brought that thing up, because sometimes, you know, as Africans, we are a bit reluctant to our kids um, telling you this, telling you this, because sometimes our teens will say, Mom, I don't want to do that because of this and this and this. So it is just part of something that is beautiful. You just need to nurture that because at the end of the day, they are living in a generation that they have to learn to speak up for themselves. Exactly. They have to learn to express themselves and mm -hmm. say, this is mm -hmm. what I want. Mm -hmm. This is, and I think it will also be helpful, especially in a world where there's a lot of peer pressure, there's mm -hmm. a lot of you know things that are not going right. I think allowing our children to be that independent in the long term is going mm -hmm. to be beneficial. It may sound like they're questioning us, mm -hmm. but the more you listen to them, the more you realize that's just how they are exactly. wired. Mm -hmm. And if they don't do that, you know, their counterparts, their exactly. Chinese, their yeah, agents, yeah. stuff like that mm -hmm. in the workplace, mm -hmm. people that you see just mm -hmm. interns and they're mm -hmm. just 
saying these <laughs> things, these <laughs> big, big things. They're not even scared of expressing <laughs> themselves. <laughs> While you, because you are brought up from whatever you yeah, are, you're yeah, hiding. Probably, yeah, so she, yeah, I yeah, that. Shall I even say, can yeah. know whatever she's saying is really, really mm, mm, off. Mm, 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 really mm, off. Mm, but mm, then the confidence mm, that comes in saying mm, it. Mm, Mm. You're just like, oh, oh my kids goodness, are power. Exactly. Are yeah. So, so, yeah. so, yeah. So, just let our children express themselves. Mm -hmm. And we need to be good listeners mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I forgot to mention about kids is those who are bringing their young kids. I've seen a lot of even my grandchildren. Sometimes you see them on the iPad. So, the mm -hmm. iPad is now the mother, mm -hmm. the iPad is now the father. Mm -hmm. No. We need to minimize screen time for our children. Mm -hmm. And to those teenagers, I know cell phones are something that are quite trendy. Mm -hmm. But I would age mm -hmm. our children from the age of 16 going upwards. Mm -hmm. They are allowed to have their phones. Mm -hmm. Or if you have good control system that you know where yeah. children, yeah. yeah. It, that would be the ideal thing because, you know, you don't know because half the time mom is at work eight hours, mm -hmm. dad is fly in, fly out, mm -hmm. probably comes after two weeks and mom just comes, goes to bed, sleeps and, and the children are busy looking and that's where our children get abused. Mm -hmm. That's where our children end up having these suicidal things or these issues with mental health. I'm not saying, you know, that's the only cause of mental health or suicide, but it, it is a contributor yeah, factor yeah. because I looked at TikTok. Most of the activities that are happening, most of them are coming from TikTok. Mm -hmm. I'm not blaming it, but I think we need to be very careful mm -hmm. on what our children watch, mm -hmm. on the website our children goes. Yeah. And I think to be a protective mother, you are not being a cruel parent. You love your children because you are actually monitoring them. They are going to be our future leaders. Mm -hmm. So how can we have our future leaders that are not thinking, that are not, you know, like having the reasoning capacity that just mm -hmm. follows whatever is happening? Yeah, that's Please, we want to nurture our children mm -hmm. to be the next prime ministers, presidents, yeah, exactly. and leaders of yeah, tomorrow. So that they can live their mm -hmm. life fully, mm -hmm. all right? Mm. I don't know what your take is on, um, so what, what advice would you give to two very professional parents that are both busy in their careers? Because one thing I've noticed here in Australia, I do have a few bosses. Um, one that quickly comes to mind is an intensivist, a very successful intensivist that I've um, worked closely with. And, you know, he was sitting down with me and told me, you know what, we decided as a family that my wife would... Um, raise the kids up to this certain age and then she would come back. The wife is a nurse because I just met the wife. She was now upskilling because she mm -hmm. had not worked for a long time. Mm -hmm. And she told me she, they, they are from South Africa. Mm -hmm. So she he actually was telling me that that actually worked for them. But I don't know how, you know, it would be like for us coming from Africa. It may border where you talked about, you know, competition and, you know, not wanting your career to stall. And I liked it because you brought it at the beginning and said you wanted to stay home so you allow your children. Would that concept be something that you would uh, suggest or would that, where do you see that concept going where, you know, if kids are younger, you know, the concept of, you know, one parent, um, you know, you know, like as a family, you know, one parent sort of, you know, people give themselves time, like when we maybe one is exploring their career and then the other one does it and does it. So they're both going up their careers, but in sort of stages, because I feel like sometimes we are all running after the Australian money, after titles and all that at the expense of our children. I know, like that's why I said in communication is the best thing. Mm. I've worked with a lot of people mm. that probably, you know, like they are career driven, mm. but they will sit down and look at who is pushing for career advancement and who is willing to stay at home. I think it's, a it's, it's the way you talk to each other to say, what would you like to do? This is your situation. This is my situation. Who would you to stay home? We do have stay, stay at home fathers. Yes, yes, yeah. sure. We do have stay at home mothers, mm -hmm. but it needs to come from the two of you. What do you agree upon? and what you want to sacrifice, you know? Do you want mm -hmm. to sacrifice your career versus your children? What do you value what most? Mm -hmm. 
What is the impo most important thing in your life? But I would say my children mm -hmm. are, are very important. Or you can do, some people would say, I work two days mm -hmm. right. so that I can maintain my registration mm -hmm. per, day, per, per week. Mm -hmm. And then that person will take care of the kids. In those two days when this other person is working, the other one, the other one is at home. They take care of the, the, the do a swab. What I've seen in here is, correct me if I'm wrong, if you go on the duty roster, on the duty roster, look at the FTE. Normally it's written 1, 0 0.8, mm. 0 0.7, 0 0.3. Mm. Yeah. But the majority of people from Africa, they are the ones that are working full time. We are the ones working overtime. We are the ones that are working overtime. Whenever I said, you know, we are here for money. We are not here for money. Mm -hmm. We are here to, 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 to give our children a better life. Mm -hmm. That's true. So if we are not giving that better life to our children, you are rushing for money. Money you, you will never be enough. Mm -hmm. I think we've said it from the way. Yeah. 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 So I think you need to, we need to value our children mm -hmm. and make sure that we communicate who can stay at home. Yes. who is going to do this. Yes. And it depends on how you handle your finances. Some people say, my husband doesn't give me money or my wife doesn't want with, this, with their money. So that's where people need to communicate and mm -hmm. see, are we into this together <coughs> or not? Yeah, and also yeah. respect yeah. each other's mm -hmm. yeah. positions because yeah. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. there's no one mm -hmm. that's doing better than the other exactly. because you're, mm -hmm. you're all working mm -hmm. the same goal mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. You're not competing, mm. you're actually mm. complimenting and mm. not competing exactly. with one another. Exactly. I think that's important. Mm. Um, thank you for, for, for exploring that. That is really that's, helpful. Yeah. I know there's so much more that we can yeah. talk about. In there's this one area. thing that mm. I wanted to, to, mm. to, to, to talk to, to you, to mention, mm. to mention to you about people, the culture that, I'm not saying it's the best culture, but I've, I've embraced that culture that people mm. here, they actually focus on their family first, mm -hmm. and then they'll go to the extended oh, yeah. family. Yeah. 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 So yeah. if we could embrace that, mm -hmm. that we are family focused, family, family, you know, immediate family comes first. Mm -hmm. Then you can help. I know our parents did a great job, but you can't sacrifice your children. You can't mm -hmm. sacrifice your marriage because mm -hmm. you want to please people that are back home. So they say, mm -hmm. yeah, there should be a level where you draw a line to say, mm -hmm. yes, my mom needs this, but this month, mom, I don't have enough. Mm -hmm. I'll give you next month. Mm -hmm. They need to understand that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if we continue to just be dishing out money, mm -hmm. people think that money is being picked. You don't mm -hmm. work. People, money grows in trees. <laughs> That's very mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was changing jobs and I was moving from the practice that I was to the practice that I am now, I remember I was very nervous about sharing that information that I would be moving practices because obviously I was living far from home and I would go back and forth. It was a very difficult time of our lives because then I felt like I wasn't being involved too much in my kids' life. But anyway, when it came to the time of leaving, I remember I was very nervous when I was speaking to the boss. But you know what the boss told me? You know what, Anna? Family comes first. That's the saying that I love here. Family comes, comes first. first. And mm. we will understand that mm. you have to mm. care for mm. family. Mm. We value your service mm -hmm. and we appreciate that you've worked with us for this long. Mm -hmm. But it's time for you to move on and mm -hmm. be with your family. Mm -hmm. And then my next hurdle was talking to some of my, you know, regular patients mm. who kept telling me, I hope you're not leaving, I hope you're not leaving. <laughs> but when I told them, look, it's harder for me, my family's in part. And then they're like, for all this, almost two years, your family is with them. I'm like, yes, I've been going back and forth. And a lot of them would say, no, Anna, you Go need back. to be You need to be, family. exactly, comes first. Yeah. And I've seen sometimes, like, my a family member calls when I'm picking, and I always tell them, look, I have to speak. This could be about my kid's school and stuff mm. like that. It could be an emergency for the husband. And they will always say, pick. Family comes first. Yeah. So I think mm. that's something that mm. we need to understand mm. as mm. immigrants, mm. Um, mm. that family will always come first. first yeah. If you drop that, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it is only your family. Exactly. Exactly. Your workplace will replace no. you. It definitely. Your, 
all the other things you're doing in the community will replace you within mm -hmm. a very short time, mm -hmm. but it's only your family mm -hmm. that will look mm -hmm. back and struggle mm -hmm. because of your absence. Definitely. As we wind, wind off, we do have a few more things to talk about. I just want you, because you've worked in New Zealand and in Australia, mm -hmm. I am keen to know if there are any differences you've noticed in New Zealand and Australia. For my viewers who are contemplating going to New Zealand, because um, obviously uh, some people may be thinking I want to go to New Zealand, others are thinking I want to come to Australia. What are some of the differences you've seen? I don't want you to say which one is better than the other, no, because um, just what are some of the differences uh, I could you've noticed say... in... in, in, in in the two, two countries? New Zealand is a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. It's always green. Mm -hmm. It's always raining. Oh, raining. But it has got a very small, uh, their economy is not that big uh -huh. because it's based on farming. Mm -hmm. So I can't compare the economy of New Zealand to Australia. Mm -hmm. However, if I look at the work-life balance, uh, I think New Zealand is better. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there was a research, some studies that came out mm -hmm. that New Zealand was on city number five somewhere there in the OCD countries mm -hmm. that, you know, like it is good, you know, good work life balance, life, oh, life, work life balance. Uh, but it, it just depends with the individual. Yeah, Here, exactly. Australia is good. Yeah. I love it. The, the work environment is good. It's perfect. It has got a bigger economy. Yeah. So if you're in a bigger economy, your wages are good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it no, yeah. So yeah. The wages are a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. But I think yeah. the other thing that I, we must tell our viewers is, mm. I think New Zealand is a bit lenient on the PR. I'm not too sure, but I just know the one thing that I know for sure is mm. the age limit mm -hmm. for permanent residency mm. in New Zealand mm. is higher. It's I think it's about 50 years old. Yep. Compared to Australia, yep. which is 45 years. So yep. if your situation is mm. that one where you know you're thinking, mm, yeah. time is not on yeah, my yeah. side with Australia. And, yeah, think about New Zealand, yeah, think, actually... yeah, because I know of my friend. Mm. She came from the United, United Kingdom. Mm. They came to Australia first, mm. but because she was almost mm. 50, mm. her daughter stayed in Australia. She had to move to New Zealand mm. so that she could apply for a PR. Mm. But, you know, like governments are liquid, to, you know, it's fluid. Yeah. Today, yeah, you know, like one party goes in and they change the rules. But I think the age, the age limit in New Zealand is a little bit higher. Okay. And because it's a country with a small economy, they are looking for more people oh, yeah, to come to, to, yeah, to support the economy. All righty, there yeah. you go, guys. And um, if there is anything you would change today, mm -hmm. if, if you look at your life and the far that God has enabled you to come, if there was anything you would change today that you would do differently, what would that be? There are so many things that I think uh, could change, but I believe that if God has allowed me to go through that, mm -hmm. it was a lesson learned. Mm -hmm. Probably if I haven't gone through that, I was not going to learn lessons. Yeah, I was not going true. to be talking to this you know, mm -hmm. podcast because mm -hmm. I've learned quite a lot from mm -hmm. either the mistakes that I've made. However, the most thing that I want to be changed or if it could make a difference. It's for the African leaders mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. If they can change the way they govern their, you know, their governments or their people, that we could have access to everything. Mm -hmm. I think it would be better because we wouldn't be all here. We could yeah, be even in true. Africa and if also opportunities. Yeah, opportunities that we have got good mm -hmm. working hospitals, we have got good working, you know, mm -hmm. road networks mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I think, you know, if you have got yeah, job, the cre job creation, everything, I think we could be Ooh, in Africa yeah. and also, you know, welcoming visitors into our, into our yeah. country yeah. and showing the, you know, we have got good, nice natural resources in Africa that we could be sharing with other people that are coming from outside mm -hmm. the country. Those are the things that I would say if I could ask mm -hmm. for something to be changed is Africa mm -hmm. should change the leaders. Mm -hmm. They should change how they do things so that, you know, like we could also bring business. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunity in Africa. Okay. We could be the big, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, manufacturing country or whatever. Because we've got minerals, we've got everything in Africa. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we should be here. Mm -hmm. You know, like 
would have come mm -hmm. maybe it, 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 it could so and people. go back yeah. or we could be coming here as tourists just seeing how australians live or how kiwis yeah. live yeah. but you know like and go back home yeah, that's, that's the true. thing that i would think you know like all right mm. on this channel d we are all about encouraging people mm -hmm. i want to give you a couple of people that i want you to encourage today mm -hmm. and i want you to look into which camera into that camera and I want you to encourage, I'll keep telling you, the first person that I want you to encourage is somebody that is today is in a marriage that's not working, it's toxic. Somebody that um, is not even sure how tomorrow's going to roll out. I want you to encourage that somebody. Because I know you're a woman of encouragement. I would just tell you it's never too late. Mm -hmm. You know, like in your marriage, I think you can work things out. But I'm not saying stay in a toxic marriage as a woman or as a man mm -hmm. but there are always you no know, doors of communication that you can communicate try to find out where things went wrong mm -hmm. what can we change what can you do differently mm -hmm. and prayer is another thing that you've mm -hmm. prayed together yeah, yeah. pray That's see true. god read scriptures about marriage and you see how it works and just being respectful to each other. Mm -hmm. Once respect is gone in your marriage, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to regain it. Mm -hmm. So try to just respect, trust each other, and be open with one another. I think that's the way I could put it. Okay. Yeah. Good. But don't force yourself to stay in a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. I, know, like, I don't like divorce. Yeah. But, you, you know... To get help. You you, exactly. Get help. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. All right. Person number two is I want you to talk to a parent that is in that stage where, you know, you're really overwhelmed with parenting, you know, mm -hmm. kids, you know, um, you know, you don't, you're not getting a lot of support. And because my belief is children grow mm -hmm. and we sort of should be able to enjoy every moment. But I want you to just encourage somebody today that is that point where they are, you know, having kids with special needs, kids um, that are giving them a hard time kids that are struggling in school, kids with better health, kids that are just generally, because of being in this part of the world, she's feeling that she's on her own. Mm -hmm. I want you to encourage that woman or that man um, or that family. You know, like, to be honest, I don't want to rub, rub feathers with people and feel that, like, I'm a superwoman. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a superwoman, but we're just sharing some ideas on how best we can handle it. Uh, personally, I would say if you are coming from Africa, you know, like it takes a village to raise a child. Mm. You might think if you don't have so many children, mm. I think probably taking them home for a holiday mm. and then they will see how other people are living in the village mm. and they will learn to appreciate whatever you're doing. Mm. You bring them back because they've only seen good here, good things. They've only, you know, seen where, you know, in environment where they demand for things. But if you take them to Africa, they will see exactly how other people are living. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you, are, if you can't go to Africa, what I would suggest is at your workplace, sometimes you've got annual leave. Mm -hmm. Ask for that annual leave. Mm -hmm. You take time to be with your child. Mm -hmm. Learn what your child needs. Try to help them even at school because mm -hmm. half the time, you are not monitoring their homework. Mm -hmm. You are not seeing what they are doing. Probably they've gone. I went to a school where I felt so bad. It was like um, people were gathered to see children's books. Mm -hmm. But I saw two to three children that were just sitting without their parents. Mm -hmm. What would you think that child is going to feel like? Know the schedule of mm -hmm. school and parent meeting. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, wherever, if you have got a child, no activities that your child is supposed to be it. If it's swimming, you go. If it's dancing, go. And don't choose what activity your child should do. They should enjoy what they need to do and be there for them. And also seek help. You know, we do have counselors, we do have psychologists, we do have doctors. Start from your GP and tell your story. Your GPs are very good. They will refer you to the right people. Yeah, don't shun help. Don't say we don't believe in this. You know, you can't do it on your own. You need other people. And as I said, I'm here, D. You call me. 
and I'm there to come and just, if you want to go somewhere, I can take care of your child. I'm not saying I'm the best, but I just want to give out, you know, some form of help and, you know, plant back into the community. Somebody planted and helped me and I am here. Mm -hmm. So I'm more than happy to support and ask for help. Okay. Ask for someone to help mm -hmm. you. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. And lastly, the last set of people I want you to speak to is um, people that are either have migrated are in the middle of migrating or are hoping to migrate, whether as students, whether as professionals. I just want to, you know, what is your word to them? You know, like, um, it's not a matter of just applying for a job. It's mm -hmm. not a matter of applying for a visa to go to mm -hmm. another country. You need to know that you are going to meet cultural shock. Mm -hmm. You need to know that, you know, like, Probably your religious beliefs are different. Mm -hmm. The way the system runs, they are different. So I would encourage you to say, are you sure you want to, um, this is what you want to do? Number two, do your, your, your research, mm -hmm. study, you know, the culture, do, 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 you know, due diligence of that country. Know what they want, know what, what points they're looking for, mm -hmm. especially like some countries, they're now asking for English before you apply for anything. So do all the due diligence before you make an application. Have someone whom you can ask that to actually help you and, and tell you what's happening. And because sometimes you come here and you get so frustrated because you might not find a job because mm -hmm. your skills are not on the list of the skilled you know, workers that mm -hmm. are wanted in the country. Mm -hmm. And you end up doing manual jobs that probably you're not willing to do. We don't want you to die of depression. We don't want you to die of heart attack. We don't want you to hate the country that mm. you're going into. Know what mm. is needed or what is required for you to apply for the visa mm. and how people live in that country. Good. Mm. Good. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, Dean. It's been a lovely evening. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you so much for the lessons you continue to teach me as a person and the lessons that you continue to teach uh, people that are in your life. Look, guys, um, Australia is a beautiful country. It is um, a lovely place where we can raise our children, where we can develop our careers. But at the same time, I still believe that all of us have that thing special that God has put in us to be able to do. I believe with the right footing with the right lessons you can learn from you know other people parenting can be initially tough and all that but if you learn the little you know um, lessons along the way if you involve yourself actively in your children's life and if you continue to trust god and continue to trust those around you to support you i can only hope that things will you know you continue to see uh, the benefits of doing this and the biggest thing I th I'm taking away from this uh, talk with Dee is um, family family comes first nothing else can beat family and we should all and uh, try our level best to create deposits in our loved ones lives and be there for the important things and the important things are those people that you care about there are those people that will suffer most when you're not there. So thank you so much again for coming on set. I really appreciate you. And um, as we, we leave you guys, we want you to know that um, you can do it. And uh, we want you to know that um, embrace uh, those around you and embrace whatever comes your way. Because through it all, we always see the hand of God coming through. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna.